please welcome our next author, Jonathan Colton. Harry Potter and the Urgent Message <laughs> by Jonathan Cole, who has never read nor seen any Harry Potter books or movies, and so just had to do his best. <laughs> Harry Potter was a teenage wizard with glasses. During this particular story, he was about 18 years old. You might be wondering whether he was a full-fledged wizard at this point, or still a student. This is a great question. <laughs> and depends on whether his wizard school was more of a high school, or a college, or more like a 12-year school. So many stories have been told about Harry Potter at all different stages of his education. Suffice it to say, at 18, whether he was a fully accomplished wizard, or still a student, I think we can all agree that in some sense, Harry Potter would always be a lifelong student of magic. <laughs> Harry went to Hogwarts, a school for wizards of varying ages. <laughs> Last one in is a rotten wand, <laughs> cried one of his friends. <laughs> As she dashed past him to the gnarled wooden door that was the entrance to some kind of pub or student center. <laughs> As she opened the door, laughter and conversation tumbled out into the evening. The warm orange glow of the roaring fireplace inside shined on her hair such that one could not really tell what color her hair was in the regular light. Her hair was medium long, though. And at least in this light, someone might guess it was kind of a dirty blonde color. <laughs> oh, fuss and fuddle, cursed Harry good-naturedly, using the kind of old-fashioned British-sounding wizard slang that many people find off-putting. <laughs> you didn't even tell me it was a race, slowpoke Hermione grinned broadly and the two friends shared a knowing look that, if you had seen it, would have suggested to you whether or not they had ever had any kind of romantic relationship in the past, or perhaps were, at this point in their known history, beginning to have glimmers of some kind of romantic tension, or not. The two friends went inside. About time you showed up, called a voice from across the room. It was their third friend, who was a boy. One thing you can say about this boy's looks is that he was less of a leading man type than Harry was. <laughs> the third friend gestured for them to sit down at his table, and they greeted him warmly by saying his name. <laughs> all three of them had British accents because all three of them were British. some butterbeers, said Hermione. Butterbeer is a drink that they sell at Universal Studios. <laughs> Why don't I just cast a spell to get them, said Harry, pulling out his magic wand. Prophylaxis filigree pertussis, <laughs> he said in a made-up magic language. When just then, one of their magic professors came over gesturing wildly. His name was Dumbledore, and he was a good guy. <laughs> Fiddly dee and bubbly boo, shame on you, Harry. You know there's no magic allowed in the student center, said Dumbledore. Is that a new rule? asked Hermione. I'm not sure, said their third friend. <laughs> anyway, continued Dumbledore, I want you to meet someone you've never met before, my good friend from far away, Archaeopteryx, the wizard. said Archaeopteryx, who is a completely new character about whom no details exist in the canon. 
I am six foot three inches tall, have long silvery hair and thick mustache, who then swirled around in whimsical spirals. He wore a beautiful robe that was purple and had stars on it that twinkled. He smoked a pipe that was made of the speckled wood, the bowl of which was carved into the shape of a bear. His eyes shined with an ancient wisdom, but also a kindness that made the three friends feel at ease immediately. New character. I have an urgent message that I need someone to deliver, Archaeopteryx began, but my messengers must be worthy. Before I can entrust you with this message, I need to know a little bit more about the Hogwarts school and Harry's origin story. <laughs> well, said Harry, I was at a train station and suddenly he fell over and hit his head. He was a little dizzy and not thinking straight for a few minutes, which is why he might have gotten some details wrong when he told his origin story. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure my parents were dead, and I think maybe I was on my way to a regular boarding school because the family I lived with was cool to me. Then something happened on the platform, possibly with a luggage cart or a magical animal, and then there was a hole in the wall that ended up being a portal to here. <laughs> he showed Archaeopteryx the mark on his forehead that could have been either a birthmark or a scar. <laughs> this mark was a specific shape that indicated to people who knew about such things that Harry Potter would be a great wizard and perhaps it was connected with some kind of prophecy. <laughs> some people said it looked like a star. <laughs> and other people said it looked like a lightning bolt. Harry told Archaeopteryx about how there were several divisions of the school that represented different kinds of magic and possibly personalities or philosophies. These were called houses. Slytherin was one of the houses he mentioned, and this was the one that Voldemort was in, and it was one of the bad ones. And Voldemort had a face like a saint. <laughs> Harry also named all of the other houses, which he had memorized. He told Archaeopteryx about the game they all played there that was kind of like soccer but used flying groups and magic. The name of this game was known to everybody, so they didn't have to say it out loud. <laughs> Non-magic people are called muggles. Uh, something about an owl. Archaeopteryx raised his long fingered hand. Gesture for Harry to stop. I have heard enough, and I deem you worthy, he said, but we are running out of time. The three friends were surprised to see him slowly becoming invisible. In a moment, I will disappear forever, so it is imper imperative that you deliver this message to all who need to hear it. But how do we know who needs to hear it, said Hermione. You will know, said Archaeopteryx, his body now nearly transparent, his voice fading as if it came from an ever-deepening pit. What is the message? Tell us, shouted the third guy. The message is, Archaeopteryx was nearly impossible to see now, and his voice echoed and shimmered from far away as he shouted, Trans rights are human rights! Trans men! Trans women are women! It's not complicated, you fucking turd! The three magical friends knew exactly who they were meant to deliver this message to. <laughs> they set out the very next morning on an adventure that would break the fourth wall and take the series in a very meta direction. 